why do we believe there was once a Julius Caesar who lived in the year 50 BC? And why do we think there was a man, a poet named Homer, who wrote the Iliad and the Odyssey, who was living in ancient Greece some 800 years before Christ? My question is, where exactly does our belief in this Western historical chronology or our timeline come from? You may have never heard of him, but a man who spent the last 16 years of his life in the town of Leiden is the man who single-handedly constructed the Western historical chronology. And it is largely because of his creation that we believe that history is progressing. The legitimacy of the West as a global civilization rests on the pillars of the Renaissance and the Bible. Children of the West, for example, are told of the ancient Hebrews and their exodus from Egypt, of the Egyptians, the Persians, and the Babylonians, and of classical antiquity, of ancient Greece and Rome, and of how Italians and Germans picked up on where the early classicals left off to establish modern Western civilization as though the West were the one legitimate recipient of all past civilizational knowledge. But doesn't it sound a bit suspicious? Modern history apparently tells a story of continuous progress from Adam to Joe Biden and of Western civilization as the sole heir of all future history, that is, until Western explorers came into contact with the equally ancient civilizations of Latin America, of India, and of China. Western history wants us to believe that we, modern men of the West, inherited our knowledge from the Romans and the Greek and that they borrowed it all from the Hebrews and the Babylonians, if not the ancient Egyptians and the Persians. But is this really what happened? What if I told you that this version of our chronology was completely made up by Joseph Scaliger? The Frenchman, who in his personal life pretended to be a descendant of some noble northern Italian family, and in his professional life, perhaps, also forged a false chronology. I have come to question our modern historical chronology. Even though most modern historians never even think of doing so, they simply accept the Scaligerian chronology as a given. Were it possible, for example, that the Scaligerian chronology serves to cover up the truth, namely, that Northern Europe was never a barbarian wasteland that had to be civilized by the Romans and the Greeks and the Hebrews and the so on and so forth, but rather that modern culture came from the North and that it was us Northerners who went south to civilize the barbarians there. That even today, if we watch movies such as the recent movie The Northman, where the northern peoples are depicted as bare-skinned barbarians, and the Romans, no matter how vicious, they were civilized and they had architecture and they had proper technology. What if this is a lie? What if I told you that European Jews invented themselves during the 15th, 16th, or 17th centuries? when they began promoting in Europe their biblical stories, the Pentateuch, the Old Testament Genesis story? Or what if I told you that the New Testament Bible was rather a heathen or native European response to the success of the Jewish literary innovation that was the Pentateuch? Or that the invention of cheaply made paper in Europe, mind you, not in China, and the printing press along with it during the 15th, 16th centuries, all of a sudden allowed authors to write so many drafts that they could actually become good writers. And that every self-respecting power click now all of a sudden needed to have its own holy book, and that therefore the holy books we know of, the Quran, the Bible, Old and New Testament, the Hebrew Bible, are innovations of the modern age themselves. In fact, this is how the modern age got started barely five centuries ago. And then according to this bizarre thesis of mine, Judaism, Christianity, and even Islam are no older than 500 years. And that Europe's formerly heathen temples, Europe's Gothic Valhallas, halls for the slain, 
were transformed into Christian cathedrals no earlier than the 16th through the 19th centuries. According to this conspiracy theory, the European Renaissance period didn't rediscover long-lost works of ancient writers such as Plato, Tacitus, or even Julius Caesar's De Belli Gallico, The Gallic War, but rather invented these texts and popularized them through the help of the printing press. Is it really a coincidence that most of these texts happen to have been found in the Christian monasteries, or were they perhaps produced by the Christian monks living in those monasteries? Classical antiquity, then, was rather a product of our Renaissance period, when mostly German and Italian scholars feverishly began inventing Europe's history by writing texts and attributing them to Roman and Greek authors who never existed. Real history, as recorded on paper, doesn't start until around the 17th or 18th century, and that's because paper doesn't last more than two or three centuries. And any claim made about events before the 12th century must have been completely made up. As bizarre as all of this sounds, this is precisely the claim put forth by a number of impressing scholars, including last but not least, Sir Isaac Newton and Friedrich Nietzsche, under his pseudonym Robert Baldauf. Others who question our chronology are, for example, the Russian authors Nikolai Morozov and Anatoly Fomenko, and also several German writers such as Wilhelm Kammeyer, Uwe Topper, and Heribert Illig. They all point to some form of falsification of our European history. They claim, for example, that history used to be, until very recently, the field of a priestly class, the clergy, who wrote history the same way we nowadays write science fiction about the future. And this may pose the gravest threat to our continued existence. For if these conspiracy theorists are even remotely speaking the truth, then it means that we do not really know about our true history, and that the history we do know about is largely falsified. If history can be written, it can be rewritten. And if history can be rewritten, it can be rewritten again. History, then, is written by the victors. No matter how often we say this, people don't seem to uh, grasp the meaning of that. History is written by the victors and the survivors. Now imagine this. Imagine that this century, Europe would be overrun by an alliance of Russians, Turks, and Chinamen. And they will rewrite our history, our past, and teach our children in schools that ancient Egyptians were really Chinese people, and that ancient Europeans were really Turkic peoples, and that the Russian horde built Stonehenge. History is not fixed in stone. And if we let the Silicon Valley technocrats conquer Europe, or consume Europe. They will teach us of a utopian future of transhumanism, of human beings as programmable machines all working in harmony to establish the dreamed God mind. George Orwell said it right, those who control the past control the future, and those who control the present control the past. It is therefore in our best interest to do away with notions of a real history and rather focus our attention toward a defensible history or even a desirable history that withstands the test of time. We must, in other words, learn from Madison Grant's The Passing of the Great Race or of Alfred Rosenberg's Myth of the 20th Century. These two books, especially this latter book, gives you a completely new version of history whereby Nordic men civilized the South rather than the other way around. Perhaps we should even look at Arthur Kemp's March of the Titans. It is, in any case, time for our European peoples to start writing history again and take back the future. <laughs>